much do you really know about Bach's Mass in B minor? While we're all aware of its monumental nature and its status as a masterwork, would it surprise you to learn that it was never performed during Bach's lifetime? And there's even some question as to whether or not it was conceived of by Bach as a unified piece at all, instead of just as a compendium. It exists simply as a collection of manuscripts that Bach compiled near the end of his life, but it bears no real title by him, and the work itself, as with much of J.S. Bach's music, was mostly not newly composed, but instead reworkings of previously unrelated compositions. So what is the true history of the Bach Mass in B minor? Let's find out. <laughs> the composers of the past, we tend to imagine them composing a piece all at once, sitting down to write with one single concept in mind and working on it until it's finished. But that often happens to be more fiction than fact, which was never more true than for the piece we now know as the Bach Mass in B minor. The B minor Mass was not composed all at once, far from it. It was compiled over the last few years of Bach's life but most all of its music was repurposed from earlier works by Bach, spanning more than two decades of his life. So what were those older works and what is their history? Let's begin with the large work Bach wrote in 1733, known as the Dresden Misa, which became the Kyrie and Gloria of the Mass in B minor. Oh, and by the way, if you're interested in learning more about Bach and Baroque music, please subscribe to my channel where I put out new videos every Tuesday about early music. Okay, back to the Dresden Misa. In the spring of 1733, Bach had some extra time on his hands. During Bach's tenure in Leipzig, the Tempest Clausen, or closed time, was observed during Lent and very little music was performed during that season. In 1733, however, the Prince Elector of Saxony, Frederick August I, died, and there was an additional Tempest Clausen added on after the Lenten one. This gave Bach some extra time, much of which he used to work on the twelve movements that make up the Dresden Misa, which later became the Kyrie and Gloria of the Mass in B minor. As its moniker implies, the Dresden Misa was written for Dresden rather than Leipzig. Despite his employment in Leipzig, Bach was hoping to secure a title from the Dresden court a title which he did receive, three years later, of court composer. Bach and his family members, and one additional copyist, created a set of performing parts that were presented to the new elector, Frederick August II, in July of 1733. The piece may have been performed at that time in Dresden, and the parts remained there, while the full score returned with Bach to Leipzig. The Dresden Misa performing parts are the source of the continuo figures that generally appear in modern editions of the Mass in B minor, even though the actual manuscripts that make up what we call the B minor Mass are all full scores and have no continuo figures in them, which was the norm for J.S. Bach's vocal music. Now, while I said earlier in this video that Bach worked on the 12 movements of the Dresden Misa in the spring of 1733, I didn't say that's when he composed them. Most, or all of the movements, are likely reworkings of earlier works by Bach. They are what are called parodies, which, in this context, mean retexted and somewhat musically reworked versions of earlier compositions. Take, for example, the Quitolis. Its parody model, i.e. the original or earlier composition, is actually the first movement of BWV 46, which is a cantata Bach composed in 1723. Likewise, the parody model for the Gracias Agimus TB is the second movement of BWV 29, a cantata from 1731. These are the only two movements of the Dresden Misa for which the parody model still exists, but for many of the other movements there is manuscript evidence that indicates that they were reworkings of other pieces. The types of errors in music manuscripts can actually indicate whether a piece was newly composed or was a reworking. Now, 
while there are only two extant parody models for the Curie and Gloria, for the Credo and subsequent movements of the Mass in B minor, there are many more extant parody models. And by the way, I've created a PDF with scores of the movements of the B minor Mass with all of their parody models. So if you're interested in getting that PDF, check the description below for a link. I've also put links to recordings of all the parody models in the description below, so check those out as well. So, the first movement of the Credo is an adaption of an earlier Credo in G major. The parody model for the Patrem Omnipotentem is the first movement of BWV 171, a cantata that was most likely performed on New Year's Day of 1729, and a movement which, like several other of the parody models for the movements in the B minor mass, is itself a parody of an earlier work that is now lost. We know this because we have the text for several of Bach's cantatas where the music is lost, and from this we can tell which of Bach's extant works are likely parodies. The second movement of BWV 12, which is a cantata from 1714 when Bach worked in Weimar, is the parody model for the Crucifixus and is the oldest piece of the B minor mass puzzle. The Ed Expecto Resurrectionum, Osana in Excelsis, and Agnus Dei movements all also have parody models, from BWVs 120, 215, and 11, respectively. And Bach reused a 1724 setting he wrote of the Sanctus, and of course, reuses a movement from the Mass in B minor itself by using the Gratias Agimus Tibi as a parody model for the Dona Nobis Pacem that closes the piece. Out of all the movements in the Mass, only the Et Incarnatus Est and the Confiteor were definitely newly composed at the time that Bach compiled the work. So, as you can clearly see, Bach's Mass in B minor was a great collecting and reworking of older music, both sacred and secular in nature, and not really a singular creative endeavor. It was compiled by Bach at a time late in his life when he was also interested in other large culminating works such as The Art of Fugue and The Musical Offering. And, as we've seen, the history of the Mass in B minor is likely more complex and intriguing than you might have assumed. Bach himself never called it the Mass in B minor, and one of his sons, C.P.E. Bach, referred to it as his father's great Catholic Misa. And so the piece we now know as Bach's Mass in B minor is a bit more of a tangled web than it may seem on the surface, even when viewed through the lens of the most scrupulously constructed modern editions. Hopefully its history has been somewhat of an eye-opener to you into Bach's compositional processes, and perhaps it has changed your view a bit about the masterworks of the past. Okay, that's all for today. Please subscribe to my channel and hit that little notification bell so that you get notified every time I put out a new video. And please give this video a like if you found it useful or helpful, and leave me a comment below with any questions you have. Thank you so much for watching.